how to use blue ocean strategy to focus on the value proposition of your marketing, why to specifically focus on a niche, and the convergences of content and other marketing channels. That and more on this episode of Advertising Influencers. Advertising Influencers. Conversations with today's top tier marketers from Silicon Valley and beyond. Powered by Instapage, the most powerful landing page solution. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing very well whenever and wherever you are listening. My name is Xander, and welcome to this podcast, Advertising Influencers, powered by Instapage, the most powerful landing page solution where I and the rest of my team are on a continual mission to lower the cost of customer acquisition. Here on Advertising Influencers, we feature conversations with CEOs, CMOs, VPs, VCs, and other thought leaders within the digital marketing space on how they break through the noise to build successful businesses. Last episode was certainly no exception. We talked to Daniel Shalif, the former head of marketing at Domino Data Labs. Check out his episode a bit later for some really interesting takes on why asking the right questions of your data is as important as actually having the data itself. Today on this episode, we're speaking with the founder and CEO of CoSchedule. His name is Garrett Moon. He's calling in from Bismarck, North Dakota, and we're about to have an awesome conversation on blue ocean strategy, what it means to have a powerful, unique value proposition for your marketing to support the value proposition of your product. There is quite a lot for us to get into, so without further ado, let's go say hello to Garrett. One of the things that's especially exciting about doing these interviews is getting to speak with the founders or the marketers or masterminds or whatever you want to call them behind the products that we use here at Instapage. And CoSchedule is certainly one of them. Pleasure today to be speaking to their CEO, Garrett Moon. Garrett, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excited to, uh, to visit today. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool things that we get to talk about. And you are calling from, I believe it is North Dakota. Yes, uh, absolutely. We have uh, our our headquarters is in Bismarck and uh, we have an office in Fargo as well. So we are 100% North Dakota based startup. So I've got to ask you, how many tech companies like CoSchedule are there in North Dakota? Uh, well, maybe zero like CoSchedule, oh, but there, uh, there is, um, you know, there's a good, there's actually a pretty good uh, tech boom going on in our, uh, in our state. Um, it's kind of the, uh, I don't know, Merging Prairie is kind of a big group that uh, works out of the Fargo area, and uh, they do a ton of really great work. Um, right on I-35, there, it's, uh, it's kind of a booming place. A lot of people don't know, but uh, Coast, uh, North Dakota actually has a, a legacy a Microsoft campus in Fargo. Um, and there's a really nice tech legacy but from back in the 90s. There's a big exit of a Grand Plains software to, uh, to tech. And our governor is actually a tech entrepreneur as well. So uh, and was involved in that or, or started that company that was sold to Microsoft. So we can actually North Dakota has a great tech legacy and uh, our startup community is really booming um, in the state. So many more uh, to come i hope awesome so i explained it a little bit in the introduction to this podcast etc but let's hear about co-schedule what is co-schedule what does your product do yeah, so we really think of what we do as uh, as marketing project management or marketing uh, marketing organization. Really, um, you know, there's so many channels that marketers have to take into account these days. You know, with social networks, obviously, uh, but even just you know their their own uh, website, uh, own blog content, email marketing, uh, you know, autom- automated content that they're working on, uh, content partnerships, guest blogging. You know, all of these different places where marketing marketers are publishing to, um, it's can be really a challenge to be able to kind of see everything you're working on in one place and have a good visual of what your marketing uh, team is actually trying to accomplish. So, so that's really where our bread and butter is, and we do that by providing a tool that helps with scheduling. So we are, you know, we are full, um, you know, social media scheduling tool. Uh, we have great integrations with uh, sites or tools like WordPress um, that allow you to schedule and uh, execute. 
uh, all of your content and social uh, right from a single uh, editorial calendar. Uh, and we, we, for teams, we add a whole layer of workflow management tools um, and uh, you know discovery tools that allow them to really, to really kind of make it the marketing calendar of record for their entire team. Garrett, when you started CoSchedule, what was the theory or your philosophy behind marketing in general and behind what you thought might actually work for CoSchedule? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think the um, the theory was really just that, you know, more of this this activity should be connected, right? I mean, like we, we started with a very simple idea of like, every time we publish a blog post, we schedule social messages to promote that blog post. And then we also schedule social messages to promote that blog post a couple days later. You know, we reshare that content a couple days later, maybe a week later, even down to, you know, evergreen content a few months later. Um, so we saw that one thing and this sort of like we hit publish in a blog post and we do this stuff every single time no matter what and it's super repetitive there's got to be a better way to to simplify that so we really started thinking about just that one uh, time time stamp i guess in a marketer's day and how we can make it as simple and as easy as possible uh, and a lot of what we've done since is just really blossomed from that same idea but but that was it that was where we really started um, to put it all together yeah, that makes perfect sense. And as somebody who is a marketer, as somebody who has used your tool and uses it regularly, actually, I can totally yeah, relate to that. It's great. But what about growing CoSchedule itself? How did you think you were going to get this company to the point that it is today? And how has that changed between now and then? Yes, yeah, great question. I think right from the beginning, um, you know, inbound marketing was was going to be our strategy. I mean, really using our tool to do exactly what it was built to do uh, and putting it to work for ourselves. So that was that was a goal number one. Um, and we really focused heavily early on uh, on our blog and our email list and building an audience that way. So, you know, nothing too fancy stuff that people talk about every single day. Um, you know, we had some specific tactics and things that we used. I know we'll get there, you know, that we used to um, to do that and differentiate ourselves. That was re really important. But, um, you know, by and large, that was the focus. Uh, as we've grown, um, that email list and that, that audience building process, inbound process, is still a massive piece of what we do. It's, uh, and, and I would say by and large, it's, it's stayed the same. The KPIs and some of the things that we measure and look at have changed a little bit. You know, you start thinking more about leads and, um, you know, sales qualified leads, marketing qualified leads. Yeah, LTV and stuff yep, like that. Yep, and customer segments, um, you know, as you mature a little bit. But, uh, boy, in the beginning, it was 100% about audience acquisition. And how did you approach that? How did you build your email list? That was obviously a big part of your growth and your success. So what did you find was the most effective mm -hmm. way or effective method for doing that? Well, one thing I would say is we made it the only metric that mattered for our marketing team. Um, basically, the only real KPI and thing that we measured for for the first couple of years was the email list size. And I always really like to have extremely clear singular metrics um, that you that you take a look at rather than having a dozen different numbers, uh, because I think. You know, if you're looking at email list growth, my feeling is that you'll do the right things. The right things will happen to make it successful otherwise. Now, there, there's ways that you can get the wrong type of growth, sure. But most of the time, that's that doesn't happen when you have a, a team that's that's smart and dedicated. So, one, we just focused only on email list growth. That's the number we measured every single week. That's the number we talked about. Um, from, from there, there's a ton of different things that we did. Um, but... A lot of them revolve around your typical, um, you know, type lead gen type of stuff, right? One is free tools. Uh, we have click to tweet plugin. Uh, we have the headline analyzer, which um, is a really popular tool for analyzing and making sure you have the best headlines, the most shareable headlines uh, on your blog or using or for social media. And those tools, uh, we would attach an ebook. Sometimes we would make them, uh, you know, email, give us your email to play type of uh, freemium tools. And uh, we collected, you know, tens of thousands of email addresses that way and built that built that audience list that way. Um, the other one is that every single post on the CoSchedule blog, probably for the last one or what, year and a half, two years, has included a downloadable resource. So we don't release content where you can't download something like a infographic, uh, you know, a uh, user. Usually it's like a worksheet um, where you can actually, or an action, we kind of focus on actionable content. So we like to have worksheets where you can actually download that worksheet and execute a plan or uh, brainstorm or work through some of the things that you learned in our blog post. 
Question about advertising. How have you integrated ads into your growth, whether it's paid social or AdWords or even direct media placements for that matter? So we really haven't focused a lot on that at all. Uh, in fact, we've almost done, for the first couple of years, we did almost no pay, no paid. Now, um, I'd say there's there's often on times where we experimented with, you know, doing paid, um, you know, paid placement for trial signups. Um, we also did some for list growth. Uh, you know, we would just every post we would do, we would just put 25 bucks behind it for a while and, and just to promote it and get a little further reach. Um, but you know, those and those are okay. Uh, I'd say everything with paid to me is, is I, we always have this 10x versus 10% principle, right? Uh, and it is framework. And so we're thinking about it in terms of what are the things that we can do uh, in list growth that give us 10x growth. Right, um, that multiply our list ten by ten times versus what are the things that are good and can give us incremental improvements, but those are the ten percent things. And I would say most paid opportunities, uh, while they they aren't bad, they will work. Right, they most of the time they fit into that ten percent category where they're not going to they're not going to change the world for you. They're not going to hurt you, but um, they're not the end all be all. There's probably better things that you can be concentrating your your time and energy on. So paid was never a major strategy for us. Now as we've gotten larger, we have more resources. Now we we do a lot more of it. Um, uh, but you know, it's sort of. Um, now it's a 10x opportunity, partially just because of our size and the weight that we can put behind it when we do it. Yeah, that is super cool. And as you know, obviously, CoSchedule's in a league of its own. It's got its very own unique category in terms mm -hmm. of products. But what do you find are some of the marketing challenges that are unique to a product like CoSchedule? For SaaS companies or for social media scheduling tools, what are some of the marketing challenges that those specific companies find that are unique to them? I think in this day and age, it's differentiation, you know, really becomes a big problem. I mean, you and every single other SaaS company are doing content marketing and inbound marketing uh, as a growth channel. So um, the secret's out, right? It's not, you, you're not going to grow just by doing it. Um, you really have to figure out how to approach it in a way that's going to be you know, really different from how somebody else is going to do it and allow yourself to get individual traction. So I'd say the biggest challenge these days is uh, differentiation and, um, you know, <laughs> actually making it work because just doing it isn't enough. I totally hear what you're saying. And differentiation is something that obviously we all struggle with as marketers. So mm -hmm. how do you identify what your unique value proposition is among all these other tools, especially with your marketing? I'd say there's two things here, right? So one, I would say your value proposition has to be, to, you have to have two value propositions. One of them has to actually exist for your marketing, okay? And I think this is the one that people miss the most often. Value proposition for your product is actually a lot easier, right? You can see what other products do. You can hear and listen to what your customers are saying to you and understand the value, you know, that they're getting from your product. And you can translate that into your marketing message. You should totally do that. Um, that's really important. And most product people, most companies will, will do that pretty naturally. You have to differentiate yourself somehow. I'd say the bigger one is how do you differentiate your marketing? Like how does your marketing actually stand out from other companies marketing? That's a lot harder to do. Um, and so it's a lot harder to do. It's not necessarily harder to do. It's, I think it's just something that people kind of forget to consider, forget to think about. Um, there's a book you know, called Blue Ocean Strategy. I mean, mo many people have probably read it. And the angle of that book is absolutely trying to, about trying to figure out how do you differentiate your company and your brand. Um, but what we started to do is take that same approach and apply it to our marketing and our, the content that we were creating. How does our marketing have a Blue Ocean Strategy? Because uh, we are in a world where there's millions of posts going along, you know, pieces of content going along every single day. How do you stand out? How do you make a brand for yourself in that? So uh, we really defined for our own blog and our own content, a blue ocean strategy that says, here's the things that our content does that other people won't, aren't willing to do, and that we can do uh, to stand out from the crowd and build our list 10 times faster than they're building their list. And that is actually the perfect segue into my next question about Blue Ocean Strategy. So glad you brought that up. And for anybody who has not read the book, how would you describe it at a very, very high level? What is the essence of Blue Ocean Strategy? Yeah, so Blue Ocean is the opposite of Red Ocean. And Red Ocean means that the blood, the water is bloody with competition. It's the simplest way to see it. Blood sticks out in people's mind, right? It's a powerful word. 
Um, but you know, when everyone's doing the exact same thing, me too type of content marketing, um, that's, that's red, that's red water, that's bloody with competition. Everyone's competing uh, and fighting against each other. And the problem is, is that when you're in a red ocean, you are guaranteed to be doing 10% projects almost all the time. It's very, very difficult to get out uh, and to do, make a 10x improvement when you're when you're doing the exact same thing as everybody else. Um, and so there's a lot of that, right? Like you, you go on everybody's blog and you read all of these tips for making better content or how to get better lead conversion or call better calls to action. And if everybody's following the same exact tips in the exact same way, you just, you got to do the exact same thing. That's, that's what makes a red ocean. So uh, blue ocean strategy is saying, okay, like what is your blue ocean? Like what's the wide open uh, expanse where you can grow? Uh, where's your 10 X opportunity, the type of thing that nobody else is doing. Somebody else hasn't thought of, or you, you're just, your differentiating factor that's going to make your um, marketing uh, or your business 10 10x more effective than somebody else's. One thing you mentioned that CoSchedule does, which is really cool, is including a downloadable asset in all of your blog posts. Do you remember the moment that mm -hmm. occurred to you or somebody on your team as an excellent idea, a really unique way to find that blue ocean with your marketing? Yeah, I'm going to give the credit on all that stuff uh, to Nathan, who runs our demand gen team. Um, and, and I'm sure people have read a ton of stuff from him on the blog. And I think, you know, it, it was probably in a meeting where I was saying, you know, we noticed that blog posts where we do this uh, are X percent more effective. And it's like, okay, well, let's just do it every time. Like, you know, like would, would users care? Would they get, or readers care? Would they get annoyed with that? Um, so I think there's, there's always a hesitancy to, I think, in, you know, in content, there's a hesitancy to ask. People get tired of the pop-ups and uh, everything. Um, and, and usually I think that's actually because they're just bad at implementing them, not from a technical standpoint, just from a, um, we can get into this later, but like just a user or a visitor, like why the heck would they care about your pop-up, right? Like you had to figure out how to angle the content uh, or the sign up for them correctly. But, um, but we, we, I think that there's a chance, there's an opportunity where you start realizing that you can ask more aggressively than you probably are right now. And once you start kind of doing that and seeing that how well it works, uh, it becomes sort of a no brainer. And those are the, those are the best types of marketing decisions, the ones that are easy to make. I think that there's this hesitancy that some marketers have with being aggressive. There's a lot of passive marketing out there, you know, that said, obviously you don't want to be shoving things down people's throats. There's, there's two categories, right? There's that passive type and there's tons of that. <laughs> right. Um, and a lot of times what happens there is they actually are creating really good content. They're really interesting. They're providing a lot of value and right. they're um, just not being aggressive enough and they have more, they can ask more. Right. Uh, and then there's also the other side of it where you see people being extremely aggressive, but they're not backing it up with anything. It's just it's the, it's not valuable enough. It's not good enough to where I'm willing to trade my email address uh, for your content. Like, yeah, no, thanks. I'll live without it. Like, and that's 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 they're not finding that blue ocean. Um, so I think it's a combination. Like, I think it's one, you got to find your blue ocean. And then two, you have to ask uh, you know, three times as much as you would have that you think is reasonable. Um, and what you're going to find is that if you're, if you're on a blue ocean, you're in a blue ocean, people will absolutely, uh, follow those call to actions. They will sign up. They will, they will respond to your call to action with no negative side effects. I mean, it's It's all positive usually. How much of finding that blue ocean is about finding the unique user base for your product? There's a debate that I know a lot of marketers have right there. Do we go niche or do we go broad? What do you think? Niche is always easier, right? Generally speaking, like you should go with what's working. Uh, that's that's the advice. It, it, I think sometimes what happens with that conversation is we forget how big the world is, right? We forget how many people are out there. There's really no reason that you have to go broad for just about anything. Uh, you know, uh, niche is big in the, these days, particularly with an online audience. So um, I think that's more about creating focus for yourself. Like, like, okay, what's working really well? Like, if I could figure out what are my the top ten customers. Um, that keep buying more, upgrade the most, or seem to convert the fastest, right? Like what, what use case are they buying? What's, what's the job that they're hiring our product to do? Uh, what's their, you know, yeah, maybe title, location might be things, um, you know, what, but, but what most of the time it's more about what problems are we solving for them? Like, why are they hiring us to do this thing? Um, and once you can understand that, then that's the niche you want to focus on uh, very, very heavily. And then once, once you start 
doing that and you maximize in that one audience, now you have the opportunity to start thinking perhaps about other verticals or other audience types where you could duplicate those types of efforts. Um, but focusing, getting really good on specific customer use cases or customer segments, uh, I think is really, really important. It's 10, it's again, 10x versus 10%, right? If you have, if you, if you know something works, that one audience is converting well, why wouldn't you put every single ounce of your resources into maximizing that use case, that user base, right? Why would you try to get 10 other users at the same time? If when you could literally, by focusing only on one, you could probably grow 10 times more. And where is all of this going? What is the future of marketing? What do you think it's going to take as more technology comes out to break through the noise, more products, more services, more tools, all of these things are going to be available to marketers. And how can we as marketers embrace those changes? I think there's two big, big changes I, I see. One, I think is, is look at the, the look at how social uh, social media marketing has really entered entered into the marketing vernacular, right? Like if, you know, 10, 20, 12 years ago, uh, social media marketing was like this special thing. Like we had a, every company was like hustling to try and hire a social media manager and they've just hired the youngest person they could find and assume they were good at social media and they would just stick them in the job. Um, but like social media marketing was almost like a separate department Right? If you think about it in terms of like a type of like a marketing team, like there was a there was a marketing team and then they added a social media department or a social media group to that. Right. Um, and I say and, and I think a lot of people kind of expected a similar type of activity to happen with content marketing um, and that be a separate vertical and a separate thing. And I think. You know, the, the way I see it is that's probably not never going to happen for content marketing. You'll never be the type of uh, team. In fact, what's happening is all of those things are just kind of converging together. And that's just marketing. Like just marketing has changed. Every All marketing includes social. All marketing includes content and providing value uh, in exchange for trust uh, from your audience base. So I think there's a lot of convergence uh, happening with that. Now, from our perspective, we see that as, okay, well, that as that's happening, as all of this type of marketing is coming together, what that means is like marketing management management tools need to be really good at social because social is now going to become part of every single marketing project they ever do. And it's all integrated. And the other the point of that is the channels are only multiplying, right? Like we have all the social networks and we add a few every year. Um, but there's other channels as well, like content partnerships, uh, you know, webinars, you know, podcasts, videos, uh, live streaming, you know, on, on, on social networks and stuff like all of these new things are coming. Um, but what, and what marketing teams are really going to need to get good at is being able to balance all of them. How do you create a similar message and a similar brand across all of those different channels to consistently? How do you um, incorporate social into just every aspect of your marketing so it's not this afterthought or it's not just this thing that one person does in your office? Like those are the big problems that I think um, marketers are going to have to be solving and, and, and figuring out over the next couple of years. Totally, totally agree. And Garrett, it has been a pleasure having you on this podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in, chat with us, and doing it out of your busy schedule. One thing I like to ask everybody who comes on the show is what we as marketers can do to benefit the marketing community as a whole. Perhaps that's checking out co-schedule, perhaps it's something else. So any ideas are appreciated. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'd love to... Uh see what I can come up with there on the fly. Uh, thanks for the, the opportunity. Always uh, fun to come on. And these are subjects that I, I love to talk about. And I think, um, you know, like I was saying here with, with, with marketing and the way we've seen that world really changing, uh, we really think that co-schedule is right on the, the forefront of that and, and certainly hope to be. So, um, uh, you know, if you need that calendar and that place to put everything and really get a good bird's eye view of what your marketing is doing, that's really what we're trying to provide. Uh, and plus, you know, eliminating copy paste marketing. I know every single marketer out there knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say that, where you schedule something in an Excel spreadsheet or in a, uh, product, a project management tool and you someday have to copy paste it out. Uh, we want to eliminate that. But um, I guess you're kind of really talking about like how, how do marketers help each other? How do, how do, how do we help each other and, and improve the community? You know, I think um, marketers tend to actually be really good at this. And I think in some ways ahead of time, I think we, we kind of learned a secret is that sometimes just like, and that's what we do at CoSchedule. We just share like what's worked for us all the time and we kind of be continue to be kind of that open book and put it out there uh we publish ebooks on things that we've tried that have make us you know help us collect more leads and um improve uh conversion rates and all those types of things so i think 
I, I think what people need to do is continue providing value and continually asking yourself all the time is the marketing I'm producing and the things that I'm putting out there, what's in it for my customer, what's in it for my industry, like how am I providing value? And I think as long as you're always doing that um, and giving back in that way, you, you're going to probably uh, find a path to success. Awesome. Garrett, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you on, and I hope to speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks. Pleasure's all mine. It was a lot of fun. Here are the takeaways from our conversation with Garrett. Focus on the value proposition of your marketing. The value proposition of your product and how it solves a problem to your users is incredibly important for obvious reasons. However, the unique value of your marketing itself is frequently overlooked. Finding the blue ocean to differentiate your marketing from your competitors is one methodology for standing out. Focus on a niche. While in some cases the right direction might be quite obvious, the decision of going niche or broad is one of the hottest questions asked by digital marketers across all channels, mediums, and industries. Those potential customers who are more specifically interested are far more likely to spend money with your business in the first place than the broader audience of less likely potential users for whom the product doesn't meet their hyper-specific needs. Marketing channels are converging with deeper levels of integration and more dependencies on each other. Content marketing, paid media, and social media no longer operate autonomously within their own ecosystems. Each now directly impacts the other. That includes the information available to marketers for advertising personalization with new technologies such as wearables or IoT devices. Awesome conversation just there with Garrett and a great revisit actually into the beginning of my own marketing days with Blue Ocean Strategy. Fantastic book, came out in 2005, and you'll find the link to that on the show notes page, along with every other episode at instapage.com slash podcast. While you're there, there's also a ton of other stuff for you to check out, including our blog, our webinars hosted by yours truly, and of course, the most powerful landing page platform for teams and agencies. Say hello to me directly if you'd like to as well. My email here at Instapage is ander, A-N-D-E-R, at instapage.com. Next episode, we're talking to Jale Rezai, the head of marketing at Gusto, formerly known as Zen Payroll, the company that fulfills the paychecks of many professionals, including my own. She has some awesome insight into the challenges of scaling paid acquisition that are absolutely fascinating, so I hope to have you here for that next episode. All right, my fellow marketers, I am out for now. My name is Ander, and this is Advertising Influencers. Cheers to your future success, and cheers to better marketing. I will talk to you soon. Advertising Influencers. Conversations with today's top-tier marketers from Silicon Valley and beyond. Powered by Instapage, the most powerful landing page solution.